Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday morning prayer and devotion. I'm thankful for each of you who pray with me each day as we close out this week of uh, prayer and devotion. Uh, I'm looking forward to what God is going to do and what God is going to speak into our hearts through his word this morning. I was celebrating with the report from Marcia yesterday afternoon that uh, her brother-in-law is doing better with his blood pressure. And we do have some new needs on our list today, as well as some updates to share with you. And then our usual request that we've been praying for for quite some time. So I want to go through that list as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to pray for Pam Pulliam's granddaughter, Sophie, as she has been working outdoors during this heat wave that we've been experiencing. Venus's daughter, Mindy, ended up having to go to the uh, ER last night with an allergic reaction to mosquito bites. So let's pray for that situation. We have several with heart issues. Janie Parrott's nephew, Blaine, Wally Nyland, Kenny Prenzel, Brenda Storm's friend, Melvin, Cheryl LaChance, Sister Patty Arnold, Jean Bowsley, Jimmy Warren, Mike Sappington, and Pastor Mickey Lewis. Uh, Pastor Lewis was scheduled for um, open heart surgery to repair a torn heart valve this coming Monday, which was a reschedule due to staffing issues at the hospital. And now this has been rescheduled again, uh, or is being rescheduled again because he woke up yesterday uh, with whatever uh, has been going around as far as virus or sickness. And uh, so they've had to postpone that surgery yet again. He will not be having surgery on Monday. Let's continue to cover him in prayer as he awaits uh, the rescheduling of his surgery. Steve Wilkerson will be having cancer surgery in the near future. Let's continue praying for Steve and all the others who are battling cancer, including Scott Lucia, Belinda Bauer, Philip Randall, Ari Bowers, Marcia's friends' grandparents, Diane Escher, Kathy Williamson, Michael Boland, Stephanie Thompson, Joey Etheridge, Kathy Benson, Carmen's neighbor, Eddie, Alice Elizabeth, Monica Harmon, Linda Fox, Hughes wife, Tony Nelson, Del Bishop, Dennis Phelps, Kay, Sylvia Larimore, Claire, Joey Burke, Dwayne Lewis, Alicia Piero, a lady here in Puxico with stage four metastatic breast cancer, Christy Smith with stage four metastatic breast and liver cancer, Kathy Burks, Edie Percival, Sherry, and Michelle Strain, sister Cindy. Also, Myra, Laura, Legina, and Tucker, these children are battling cancer. Let's continue lifting them up in our prayers. Arlo has steadily improved. I haven't heard an update yet this morning, uh, but we have um, heard of great improvement uh, each day, and we're trusting that he continues to improve this morning. Let's keep praying for him, that he'll be able to go home from the hospital. Brantley and Elsie have heart issues. Abram Page has GNA01 disorder. Abel Ray with PKU syndrome. And Tyler Lopez with spina bifida all need our continued prayers. Those who suffer back pain, Becky Wilson, Carolyn Rogers, Bob O, Melania Cummins, Terry Nelson, Britt Moore, Charles Davis, Cindy Page, Michael Parrott, Brianna Williams, Pam's daughter Jenny, Lori Gravel, Tammy Lawson, and Judy Coffer. Renee has mobility issues due to problems with her hips and knees. Rose Brown needs healing of arthritis and diabetes. We have many others suffering with diabetes today. Emily Stanley, Cheryl Chance, Brother Pulliam, Charlie Davis, Evie, Becca and her mother Christina, J.R. Johnson, Natalie, Jimmy Warren, Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach, both with juvenile diabetes, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, and myself. Shirley Perkins has kidney issues and other medical problems, uh, including blood clots. Uh, Jim Connor is awaiting a kidney transplant uh, and has been waiting for several months. Sarah Stroop, Marty DeLott, Riley March, and Carmen's sister Tracy need healing of MS. Mara Sullivan needs healing of autoimmune cerebritis and lupus. Karen Stroop's father uh, suffers with Alzheimer's. Leslie Sutton and Bob Perkins need healing of shingles. My dad and my mother-in-law, as well as Tim Workman and Russ, all needing healing of Parkinson's. Cheryl's family member and Sue's brother need healing of the effects of uh, head injuries in their past. Olivia, Natalie, Aubrey, Heather, and Michael need healing of stomach problems. We're praying for LaVon, Michael and Grover Straysner, Kendra Ortiz, and Robbie Northrup for healing of lung conditions. 
Beth Wheatley, Marsha Moore, and Melana Cummins need healing of migraine headaches. In our other health needs today, let's remember Chuck Lorry, who's on hospice, Ron Asher, who is in a nursing home and needs strength and encouragement, and Charlie Davis's dad, Tom Shannon, Chloe Isaac, Mike and Tony Hodge, Devin Huff, Frank Day, Phyllis Robinette, Gary Nelson, Chris Ramey, Les and Pat Wells, John Belcher, Meredith, Jim Johnson, Jimmy Holden, Nicole, Regina Bishop, J.R. Johnson, Jamie Jo Day, Wilda Morrison, Judy's daughter Jennifer and Judy's sister Mary, and Shirley Garner, all who have uh, various health needs today. We're believing for continued recovery for Ashley Johnson, Evangelist Billy Huey, Carmen's cousins Kelly and Shannon, Tina's mother, Sheila Sappington, Leslie Sutton, and Eric Williams. Kristen's uncle Monty needs our continued prayers for his physical and spiritual needs. And in our other physical, our other spiritual and family needs today, let's remember our Mingo RCF residents, our Mingo Job Corps students and alumni, Brother and Sister Poyum's granddaughters, Morgan and Haley, uh, Josiah, Rose Brown's granddaughter and her husband and kids, Maury's family, Johnny Nelson's family, Annette and Dave, Art Chandler, the Rush family, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Judy and Mike's family, the Sappingtons, Pam Poyum's children, Charles Gossett, Alicia, Grace's friends, Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa, Dawson, William Davies, Pam Davies, Baby G's adoption, Marsha and Britt's family, Cheryl's family member, Alan, Regina Marlin's family, J.R. Johnson, Beulah's family, Debbie Biddick's daughters and their families, Dee Dee Sealer's biological father and his family, Matt and Michaela, Mark and Caitlin, Carrie Jones and her family, and Karen Sampson and her family. And although I didn't describe the needs of many of these, um, there are many different needs uh, ranging from drug addiction all the way to just general discouragement and needing an uplift in their spirits today. Uh, some of these are people who are prodigals. Some have never known the Lord. And we believe that God is able to do anything and wants to save our family and friends. And he wants those who are attempting to live for him to be strengthened today and encouraged through our prayers. Let's keep praying for all of our North American missionaries and global missionaries today. We need to pray for peace and comfort for several families. There have been several uh, losses due to death uh, over the past couple of weeks and we need to remember all of them. Jordan Rogers did pass away yesterday shortly after being taken off of life support. He was just 26 years old. His family needs our prayers, much prayer during this time. Uh, Georgiana needs the comfort of God as her husband died this week. The Heisen family buried their father yesterday. Oscar Bowman's sister passed away last week from cancer. Uh, the family of this boy who drowned in storm waters named Muhammad uh, needs our continued prayers as they struggle to cope with their loss. Uh, we need to continue to remember Johnny Nelson's neighbor and friend, um, th that family of Ron Evans who passed away Monday, the Fredrickson family in the Life Sanctuary Church in Kabul mourning the loss of Rachel Fredrickson. Uh, unspoken needs today, uh, Rebecca's mother Dana, Michelle's friend, and Carmen all have unspoken needs. And I ask you to cover uh, my family, the Ramey family. This is my sister and her husband and their kids traveling home from South Carolina after a week of vacation. They're beginning to travel back home today, I believe. So let's keep them in our prayers this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for each of you who have signed on here this morning. Looks like we're eight strong, uh, nine including myself as we go uh, to prayer this morning here in just a few moments. Welcome Johnny and Judy, Sherman, mom and dad back safely from their trip. Um, Marsha, happy Friday to you. Sister Pam, good morning to you. Kristen, good to see you. And um, I haven't seen Sherman quite yet, but I know he'll be on here in just mere moments. So welcome to you, Sherman, and others who will be joining us at different times throughout the day or over the weekend as you get a chance to um, uh, sign on and uh, go through the video and through the prayer requests for yourself. I want to wish all the dads out there a happy Father's Day coming up this Sunday. We're thankful for you and for fathers who set good examples, such a blessing. Um, and we need to pray for our fathers as they need strength 
uh, to stand for the Lord during these last days. I want to read to you this morning from Job chapter 34, Job chapter 34, verses 4 and 5. And it reads like this, Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. Now, don't anybody go uh, out there today and start quoting that scripture and telling people to live by that scripture because this is a very good example of uh, the need for context. When we say that everything in the Bible is uh, true, that is a true statement. However, not every scripture in the Bible standing alone um, is um, to be uh, built doctrine upon and to be used in the way that it was written. Um, and that's because we have the need for context. Job, the book of Job is a great example. If you don't read the surrounding scriptures, you can take these scriptures and really get off track because these words are spoken by one of Job's quote-unquote friends um, who came to supposedly encourage him and they ended up spending all their time trying to find Job's secret sins and determine why God was punishing him. So these are the musings of one of Job's uh, friends and companions who had come to uh, analyze his situation. And we find at the end of the book of Job that these people are all reproved and, um, and Job is vindicated in the end and restored. And so uh, when we read these scriptures uh, and it plays kind of into our mentality sometimes, you know, we all want to be right. We want to have the right answers and know the right choices to make. When we disagree with someone, we can be aggressive in our explanations of why our view is the right one. And Job's friends certainly felt this way. They were sure that Job's plight was judgment from God. They could not accept his claim of holiness. In their eyes, Job's circumstances obviously condemned him for some hidden sin. This story illustrates the error in assuming the role of judge over another person's life. In the New Testament, Jesus warned about the pitfalls of passing judgment when he declared, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. That's Matthew 7 and verse 2. We can and should discern right and wrong based on God's word, but we must be careful not to follow Job's friend Elihu in this example of passing judgment when we do not know all the facts. We need to point people to Jesus and allow him to hold on to the judge's gavel instead of us trying to rip it out of his hand. He alone is qualified to determine who and what is right in all situations and circumstances. Uh, this, uh, this thought came up in, in a church service that we were visitors in. They were having open Bible discussion um, in a neighboring church here last weekend. And the question came up about uh, judging. And um, I thought about that because the Bible does say that we are to judge with righteous judgment. But in those cases, it's really referring to us judging our own life and allowing the Holy Spirit to correct us, not talking about us passing judgment on other people's situations that we don't know all the details of. And so let's refrain from judgment, uh, judgment of others. Uh, let's allow God to judge our spirits and to keep us uh, going down the right path. But let's never choose for our self-judgment and begin to meet that out to others. Let's not pass judgment on any situation that is incomplete. God is still on the throne. And there are situations that we're praying about that others may have passed judgment on and given up on, but God has not. There are people on our prayer list who have been uh, cut off from family and friends and have burned all their bridges, but there is one connection that is constant, and that is God's willingness to reconcile to himself. I know I'm beginning to ramble here this morning. We need to go to prayer. But I just want to encourage you today that there are situations that maybe we are tempted to give up on today and to pass judgment upon, but let's leave it in the hands of God and let's believe that he is still able to do exceeding abundantly above what we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, for your mercy and your loving kindness. We thank you for your long suffering. We thank you, Lord, that 
um, that we have not uh, suffered the judgment that would be irreversible, that anyone's opinion of us today, Lord, is just that. And your word has the final say, and your mercy and your grace enters the picture, and we thank you for that today. We pray, God, that you would move in all of these needs, Lord, that your mercy would be new this morning as your word has promised. Help us to realize that, that your mercies are new every morning. Help us, God, to receive grace for this day, strength and power, Lord, to navigate this day, to be a blessing to someone who's in need. Lord, you see all these here in need today, and we know it's your will to heal. It's your will to save. It's your will to deliver today, to set free. And we're believing for that this morning. We're believing, God, for healing for these who are suffering in body. We pray for Mindy, Lord, that the doctors would know how to treat this allergic reaction. We pray for Sister Pam's granddaughter, Sophie, Lord, that you would strengthen her as she's having to work outdoors during this heat wave. We pray for all these who are suffering with heart issues today, Lord, that they would receive a healing touch. We pray for Pastor Lewis, who's had to have his heart surgery rescheduled yet again. We pray for healing for his body from this virus or sickness that he's contracted, that he would be able to very quickly overcome this and be able to have the surgery that he desperately needs. We pray for Steve Wilkerson today, Lord, for his upcoming cancer surgery. For all these others who are suffering with cancer today, Lord, as we've called their name out this morning from this prayer list, uh, Lord, you are already aware of each one of their situations. You've not left them and you've not forsaken them, God. You're with them today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're in every circumstance of life. We believe for miracles today. We believe that you're going to be glorified, Lord, in the end of all of these situations. We pray, Lord, for these children who are suffering in body today. Myra and Lorelei, Jenna and Tucker as they battle childhood cancer. We pray for Arlo's recovery and for Brantley and Elsie with their heart issues, Lord, that they would be overcomers in every way today. We pray for Abram and, Abram and Abel and for Tano today, believing for their healing. Lord, for these who are suffering with back pain today, we speak healing. Those who have mobility issues and problems with their hips and knees and dealing with arthritis pain today, we believe for their healing right now. We pray for these who suffer with diabetes. Lord, touch Rose Brown and Emily Stanley. Touch Cheryl and Brother Pulliam, Charlie and Evie, Becca and her mother, J.R. Johnson, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, and Jimmy Warren. We pray for Cindy and Lloyd Page and Tim Workman, for Christian Carr and for Titus Dornbach. Lord, you're the healer of every disease. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, Jesus. We pray, God, for those that are suffering with kidney issues today. Lord, touch Jim Connor. Lord, praying that a kidney will become available for him. We pray for Sister Shirley Perkins today. Lord, touch her body. Minister healing to her right now. We pray for Sarah Stroop and for Marty DeLock, for Riley March, and for Tracy for healing of illness. We believe for Karen's father uh, struggling against Alzheimer's today. Mara Sullivan with lupus and Sarah Brightus. Uh, Leslie and Bob dealing with shingles, uh, those who are suffering with Parkinson's disease, uh, these with ongoing effects from head injuries. We pray for Cheryl's family member and Sue's brother today that they would receive the healing that they need. Lord, these that are dealing with stomach problems and lung issues today, migraine headaches uh, and other health needs this morning, Lord, you are able to do anything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God, for hearing our petitions today. We cherish, God, your presence today. We cherish that healing virtue that flows from you this morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise for it. You are our source. You are our strength. You are our hope. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for Chuck Laurie and for others who are on hospice care today, for Ron Asher and so many others who are in long-term care facilities. Lord, be their strength and their hope and their encouragement today. We believe for continued recovery for Ashley, for Carmen's cousins Kelly and Shannon, for Brother Huey and for Tina's mother, for Sheila Sappington, for Leslie Sutton, for Eric Williams. We pray for Christian's Uncle Monty today, Lord, that he would receive a physical and spiritual touch. We pray, Lord, for each of these today who have uh, needs in their families, uh, these that have spiritual needs, these who are battling addiction today, Lord, and these uh, who are who are struggling, God, 
with issues going on in their in their households, in their family relationships. God, we pray that brokenness would be healed. We pray for reconciliation. Most importantly, we pray, God, that they would be reconciled to you, those who are prodigals and are away from you, those who are discouraged, Lord, that they would not give up today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way in our families. Have your way in our churches. Lord, strengthen your people today. I pray for all the dads out there today, God, that you would help them, Lord, to be good examples, Lord, that they would follow uh, the example that you have set for us so perfectly, that they would love their wives and their families uh, even as you have loved the church. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way in our lives, God. Direct our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray for our global missionaries today, for our North American missionaries. God, open doors for them. Lord, bless and strengthen them, those who are in dangerous areas today and face physical the threat of physical harm. We pray your protection upon them. Those who are battling spirits today that have come against the church, we proclaim victory, Lord. We resist the enemy knowing that as we're submitted to you that he has to flee. Hallelujah. We believe for victory in every situation this morning. We pray for these unspoken needs for Rebecca's mother, Dana, for Carmen, for Michelle's friend. We believe for traveling mercies today for the Ramey family as they're on the road coming home from South Carolina. And we believe today, God, for your peace and strength and comfort for all of these families, Lord, who have lost someone uh, in recent days. We pray for the Rogers family, for Georgiana, for the Heisen family, for Oscar Bowman and his family. We pray, God, for the family of this child, uh, who drowned in storm waters. We pray for uh, the family of Ron Evans that you would strengthen and comfort them in their loss. Uh, the Fredrickson family and the the uh, congregation of Life Sanctuary Church in Kabul as they mourn the loss of Rachel Fredrickson. Lord, be with them. Strengthen God, we pray. Lord, those who have uh, lost their, uh, their earthly father and are facing that Father's Day without him, we pray, God, you would comfort their hearts and strengthen them, and we give you praise and glory, Lord, for all that you're doing. We thank you. We worship you. We honor your name. This is your kingdom and your power and your glory. It all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you for praying with me all week long. Let's do this again so beginning on Monday at 7.30 a.m. right here on Facebook Live, and I look forward to to pray with you once again.